my microphone. Good morning. The Lord be with you. Welcome. My name is Stephen Sanders. I'm one of the pastors at Oak Hill United Methodist Church. This morning, I, along with Pastor Laura Adam, we are leading in worship as we come together on this beautiful day. For those of you who are in the sanctuary, I extend to you a welcome. I met some people who have come back into the sanctuary today for the first time in a long time. Um, for those of you who are worshiping online, I also extend to you a welcome. I'm glad that you have chosen to be with us um, at whatever time you are worshiping with us today. A couple of things as we gather. First of all, for those of us in the sanctuary, I ask that we continue to wear a mask that covers both the nose and the mouth, unless you are act act actively leading worship this morning. Um, I will share at the end of worship, but it sounds like I'm sharing now. Um, beginning next Sunday, we anticipate going into our final stage of reopening, um, which means masks become optional. Can I hear an amen? amen. All right. For those, and, and so if you are in the sanctuary, I ask if you have prayer concerns and also to let us know that you're here today, there is a little card in your bulletin. If you'd fill that out with your name and contact information, that helps us stay in contact with you. And if you have any prayer concerns, if you would write those down, um, and we have offering plates in the back of the sanctuary, if you would drop that back there, that'll let us know that you're here and that we'll be praying for you. For those of you who are worshiping with us online, if you would just say a hello and um, our host will get your information. And if you have prayer concerns that you would like for us to be sharing with the congregation, um, to be typing those into Facebook. Um, for those of you worshiping online, if this is your first time with us and would like to get to know a little bit about Oak Hill, if you just reach out to one of our online hosts and they'll help you connect a little bit, with, a little bit more with the church. And for those of you who are new with us in the sanctuary today, I don't know if you're new because I'm the new guy on the block still. I can say that for two more weeks. So I am so glad that you are here today, that you are worshiping with us. I invite us to join in making this time sacred and opening our hearts to the living God. If you're, at, if you're watching online, if you will join us as we sing, if you're in the sanctuary, will you stand as you are able and will you lift your voice to God? <coughs> And as we um, enter into this time of prayer, I would ask that you add a name to the prayer list that you have in front of you and 
be sure you take this entire list home with you or keep it at home and um, use these, this list as a, um, a part of your prayer this week. The name that we need to add is Dot, D-O-T, McCreary. Dot McCreary is in the hospital and quite ill, and she's asked that we lift her up in prayer this morning. Let us pray. We greet you, welcoming God, with our many morning moods. Some of us couldn't wait to get here. Some of us barely made it. Some of us sit at home with pajamas on, drinking a cup of coffee. Some of us know exactly why we've come. Others aren't sure. And yet something calls each of us to draw near to you. And so we have gathered at home and in, in this sanctuary to seek and to worship. We remember before you all that has made life good in recent days. The daily love of family and friends, the satisfaction of work well done, the sweetness of a good night's sleep, or any and all things which make us glad to be alive, we rejoice and we give thanks. And we remember also all people who find it difficult to rejoice, or people who live in peril, the lonely, the sick, the brokenhearted, those who are a long way from home, people who are imprisoned or at war, for our sisters and brothers facing any distress, we pray that your strength and peace will find and sustain them. And so we lift up especially Dot McCreary for your healing strength and presence as she is in the hospital. And we lift up too, O oh God, all those involved with the Florida building tragedy and that collapse. We pray for the victims and for their families who wait for news about them. We pray for brave first responders and searchers. We pray for the Surfside Florida community. We pray, O oh God, that as that tragedy continues to unfold and as workers continue to do their best to find these people who are lost, that somehow, O oh God, all of these folks involved may experience your comfort, your strength, and your hope through the support and love of others. And though it's hard for us, O oh God, we pray for those we dislike and mistrust, hoping that they too pray for us. Grant that these prayers may open our eyes and our hearts to one another, and so make love and peace more than slogans in the church and in the world. Because you love us, O oh God, and because we love you, may all that we pray aloud and all that we hold within our hearts be redeemed, be forgiven, and made whole. For we pray in the name of the risen Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
Miss Jennifer is here waiting for the children to gather round here in person as well as at home. It's time for the children's time. Yay, Taylor's here. Come on, guys. Okay, Abe, I want everyone on this side. It's easier. Good morning. Love your jumpsuit. Very cute. How are you guys today? Okay, do you guys, can you see what I have here? What do you think it is? What kind of chest? There's a lots of chest, I know, I know. A specific kind of chest? A treasure chest, yes. Okay, so what do you think is inside a treasure chest? Gold coins, ta-da. I brought treasures with me today. So what do you guys think a treasure is? Could be a family treasure something that you think is valuable. So I brought some treasures with me that I want to sh share with you of some things that are valuable or special to me. So I have an apron that was my grandmother's. I have a letter to me that, that my extra girl had written in school, and it's a treasure that I keep next to my bed. I have a photo of all these goofy people, my family, because they are one of my treasures. I have, it's a little apple, but if you open it, no, the music stopped. It's a music box that was my grandmother's so that helps me remember my grandmother. I have a bracelet that was my great-grandmother's. I have, now this one's kind of silly, but it's a, it's a treasure that I love very much. So Taylor, can you read what that says? Arthur. Arthur. Okay guys, this is Mr. Art's ID bracelet from high school and he gave it to me. So it's very special. So all of these treasures, they don't really mean anything to you, do they? No, but they mean a lot to me. They remind me of things in my life. They remind me of people that are in my life. And those help me remember that my life is a treasure too. So. Do you think your life is a treasure? It is. It is. All of us, our lives are treasures. And I want you guys to remember, so God created each of us, and we are treasures to him, and then we are treasures to other people too when we share our gifts with them. Would you guys say a prayer with me? Thank you, God, for this beautiful day. Thank you for the many blessings in our lives. Continue to guide us and help us to remember that each day is a gift from you that we should treasure. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, if you guys will go sit with your parents. Thank you, Miss Jennifer, for sharing about treasures and the things that we value. I hope that one of the things that, that we are able to value as a church community at Oak Hill is the value of the ministry of this place, how God is working in and through this church called Oak Hill to touch people's lives. Each week, we're, we're trying to share about a ministry and how it's touching people's lives. And we're going to share a little bit about a ministry in a video, but you're going to have to insert how it's touched your life. Um, 
because it's one that all of us have participated in during this crazy last year. So would you show the video, please? Hi, I'm Don Weiss. I'm the technical director for Oak Hill and have been for just under a year. It's my job to oversee all audiovisual aspects for streaming and in-person worship. Before I was on board, there was a dedicated group of volunteers whose difficult task it was to put together the initial streaming system that was to be used when the pandemic took hold. Here are Shannon, Corinne, John, and Paul sharing some of their challenges that they had with that initial system. I'm John Nelson and I've been a member of this uh, church, Oak Hill UMC, since uh, 95. And I've uh, seen a lot of challenges and a lot of changes over the years, but uh, this past year was the biggest. I've been helping out with the live stream uh, of the church service for the last year now, and it's uh, it's been a, a great experience. I've been uh, thinking back to last year, back in March, when it became pretty apparent that we were going to have to uh, shut down the church services, which was a difficult decision to make. Uh, when my wife, Corinne Weisgerber, asked me to come in and help out with live streaming one Sunday in early March of last year, I thought it would only be for maybe a week, two weeks, three weeks at the most. In-person worship was suspended and had a challenge to figure out how do we continue our worship experience and uh, do that technically. What followed was a lot of learning, a lot of uh, creativity on behalf of uh, a team of people that came together uh, rather quickly. Through the grace of God, we brought together a team of folks that included uh, Shannon Butler and Corinne Weisgerber, myself and Paul Harper uh, and our music director, Jillian, and uh, uh, put our heads together to try to figure out how we can stream uh, worship experience and worship time to those folks who are at home. And uh, the church had not been set up for live streaming or any sort of broadcasting beyond the building. So uh, we had to kind of figure this out uh, together as we went along. Well, initially, uh, it was very rudimentary, using some Apple phones uh, as cameras and some tripods, and, uh, and yet it worked. Uh, we hooked up to the old soundboard. I got on Facebook uh, Live and started live streaming uh, without really having any type of equipment other than our phones. And we got those two iPhones hooked up with a mic going into a laptop. Uh, with software so we could broadcast live there and we still had problems we broadcasted for about a month doing that still we didn't really have the internet capabilities in the sanctuary that we needed to do this so i think next next step and there was probably about 10 of those steps involved in in, in this story uh next step we just started using mobile hotspots um so we used our cell phones as a way to um stream to service. So, uh, you know, what we were trying to do at that time was to do something that really couldn't be done, and that's to capture what it's like to be in a live uh, uh, worship service. So we decided we're going to make this an experience rather than just a worship service. We're going to try to catch it from all sorts of angles, different camera angles. I wanted to be able to see behind the organ like you see here. Uh, we wanted to see underneath the organ. Uh, we got we got uh, Cheryl playing with her feet to the bass notes and that sort of thing. Uh, we got shots from all different places within the, the sanctuary. And I, th I think it became pretty clear at some point that we, until we got all the equipment, we would have to start recording services ahead of time, uh, which would give us a little bit more time to put together a service. Um, and then stream that on Sunday morning. So for a while, that's what we did. The broadcast studio was our living room, our living room floor. And so we did that for about three months and we had a lot of fun with it. Uh, there was, uh, if you recall, the ghost of Mr. Chicken appeared. Uh, the organ would play from unknown places, voices speaking in the background, a psychedelic solo by uh, Cheryl. Uh, just all sorts of stuff were going on. And I want to thank the congregation so much for 
just dealing with us and realizing that, you know, we're trying to learn this on the fly. Uh, since then, of course, we've gone through a process of procuring uh, cameras and putting together the, the processes, the uh, wiring and all to, to uh, make sure that we're able to, to stream. And we started ordering right about at the same time as every university in the country, every school in the country, every church in the country was trying to order the same cameras. So as soon as I would catch something on the internet on some website, I would contact uh, Angie or Jen and then they would have to get online and try to get that piece of equipment and uh, get it purchased. I can say that I have climbed up the ladder on a sanctuary <laughs> and uh, got the cameras installed. So we kind of built this, we cobbled this system together. We talked to um, Pastor Stevens' group down at his church, we talked to Jillian's church, we looked at many websites online and kind of cobbled together, you know, what is uh, the Oak Hill system at this point. Uh, it's evolved over time. Uh, we've got some uh, much better equipment now. We've got Don Weiss, a great technical director, to help us out. We're still streaming, even though we're, we're back in person, which is great, but it's really nice if you can't make it in, or even if you just want to sleep in and watch it at home, or you want to watch it later in the week, you know, on Facebook or something. I'm happy to say that we've come a long way since those early streaming days. Our stream quality is very good now. We no longer have video cutting out and audio glitches, stuff like that happening. We're very thankful to those volunteers who took charge initially and set up that first system. But we need volunteers. We always need volunteers with the AV team. Love to have you as part of our team. Please contact me at the email on the screen. Or you can come by and say hi to me. I'll be in the sanctuary at the back in the AV area. So please, if you have any interest in audiovisual stuff, I will teach you everything you need to know. Please come by and say hi and love to have you as part of our team. Thank you. Um, I'm sad to be leaving. It's been it's been fun uh, doing it. And it's and it's a creative uh it's a creative outlet, so if, if there's anybody out there that's looking to replace me, uh, you, 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 if you can frame a picture, you can, you can help with this, uh, with this live stream team. And I will say the church body was very patient and generous and compassionate because there were a lot of glitches and, and uh, mistakes that were made along the way, but everybody was very understanding and very helpful. Uh, and so I give thanks uh, for where we are now, and it was a blessing and an honor, uh, privilege to be a part of that. Uh, what a year it's been. I thank those who have given of themselves over this last uh, 32 years to um, make all of this possible. We will continue to be live streaming our worship from here on out um, because it is a way for us to be able to reach people who are not able to be here on a Sunday morning. So I thank you. I thank you for those of you who have been part of that ministry. I thank you to those who have been watching with us online over this last season. I pray that it's a way that has helped us stay connected with Christ, stay connected with this church community and it'll continue to help this church as we reach out into our community to share the love of God in Christ. Your generosity has helped make this happen, my friends. And, and I, I let you know that, you, that your generosity is, is an act of ministry. It is an act of joining with God and with joining with one another to be, to be sharing the love of God with this community and beyond. Whether you give online or through texting or through if you're in the sanctuary writing out a check or dropping cash in the, in the offering plates in the back of the sanctuary, know that your generosity matters. It matters to the life of this church and it matters in your own spiritual journey. Thank you. Now I invite you to, to listen as Diane Murwath leads us in our scripture for this morning. Good morning. Please, please turn to page 109 in your hymnal for this morning's scripture reading, Psalm 90 verses 1 through 12. This is a responsive reading and includes a sung refrain where you see the letter R.
Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before, Before the, the mountains, mountains were brought forth, forth or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from, from everlasting to, to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, Turn back, O mortal ones. For, For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday, yesterday when it is past, or, or as they wash in the night. night. You sweep them away. They are like a dream, like grass which is renewed in the morning. In, in the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the, in the evening it fades and, and withers. consumed by your anger, by your wrath we are overwhelmed. You have, you have set, set our, our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your countenance. For all our days pass away under your wrath, our years come to an end like a sigh. The years, years of our life are threescore and ten, or even by reason of strength fourscore. Yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone, and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger, the awesomeness of your wrath? So teach us to number our days, that we may receive a heart of wisdom. different way to read a scripture this morning. Will you pray with me? Holy God, I pray that you open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit. Take our hands and use them. Take our lips and move them. And take our hearts and set them afire with your unending love. Through Christ, most holy name we pray. Amen. Over the last several weeks, Pastor Laura and I have been preaching a sermon series entitled Treasure the Gifts. As we begin to come out of this, last, this season over the last 15 months, what we're hoping to do is to reflect on some of the unexpected gifts, blessings that we have received during this crazy time of life. So we've looked at some of the gifts that I hope that you have seen during this time, the recognizing the value of every person and the importance of community in our life, the importance of having times of rest, the value of our families. This morning, I want us to think about, I think perhaps one of the most important gifts that we could have received during this last season. And that is the gift of life itself. This, this last year and a half that felt like 30 has, has been a time of disruption. Any of y'all go to school from home or work from home, anything like that? Weren't able to go and see people that you love and hang out with people, things like that? Um, it's, it's been a season of disruption. For many of us, it has been but a mere convenience, in, inconvenience. For other people, it has been devastating. And I find it interesting as a pastor that, that we tend to focus on the inconveniences that we have experienced. And we, and we gloss over the reality that millions of people have died. Worldwide, over 4 million people and counting have died worldwide. In our own nation, over 600,000 people have died. In, in Travis County, it's over 1,000 people have died from COVID. Now, those numbers may just sound like distant numbers to you. It's like me going to the cemetery in New Braunfels. 
I have many of my ancestors that are buried in a cemetery in New Braunfels. And I can go and I can stand in front of their grave markers. And I can stand before the grave markers of my great-grandparents and my great-great-grandparents. And I know there is some type of connection there, but it's distant. There's nothing really immediate and close up for me. But stand over a few feet and stand on my dad's grave and see that grave marker and the distance suddenly disappears. For those of you who have lost someone that you loved, a cousin, a parent, or a friend, those numbers are not distant numbers. Those represent real lives. And, and as, as a culture, as a society, I feel like we have just glossed over many of those losses over this last year. We, we've, 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 we've glossed over it. But, but, but the reality of death is, is real. In, in, the, in the psalm that Diane led us for this morning, the psalmist recognizes the reality of death. The psalmist begins with a praise to the God who brought forth creation and created humankind from a handful of dust. And he writes, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. But then the psalmist recognizes that the same God who creates is also a God who uncreates. You turn us back to dust and say, turn back, O mortals. Every time Pastor Laura and I stand at a cemetery grave, we echo those words when we say, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Death is part of human life. And as an Americans, as Americans, it is a part of life that we don't want to recognize. It's just not who we are. I have read that as things open back up, the cosmetics and beauty products industry is taken off like a rocket. And do you know what they tell us? You can stay forever young. Here's a spoiler alert. It doesn't work that way. I can't tell you how many times I have had someone tell me, if I die, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> there is no if. It's when. It's when. That is just a reality of life. It is one that we will all have to face at some point in our lives. I find it, I find it ironic. No, it's not ironic. I find it understandable why our, why our nation has become so divided over this last period of time. Did you notice that our country is divided? Just a little bit, just a little bit. We are divided as a nation about every, almost everything. When to, think, when to open things up, whether or not we should have to wear masks, what color the sky is. We are, we are, we are divided about almost everything. And I think there's a reason for that. There's a spiritual reason for that. Because it is so much more comfortable to focus on our divisions and skip over the elephant in the room that millions of people have died and we could have been one of them. We don't like to recognize the reality that we are mere mortals. And one day this mortal flesh shall cease. I think as Americans, we are often afraid to face the reality of our own mortality. But here's the thing. The Bible and the Christian faith don't ask us to ignore it. They ask us to face it head on. The psalmist writes that we are like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning, it flourishes and is renewed, and in the evening, it fades and withers. 
I didn't quite understand the translation that we read here just a few minutes ago, so I'll give you a different translation. The psalmist writes that our, the days of our lives are 70 years, or perhaps 80 if we are strong. They are soon gone, and we fly away. Death is a reality of human life. It's not one any of us can escape. And some of you are saying, Stephen, this is not the most hope-filled message. This is not what I came here on Sunday morning to hear, the reality that I'm going to die. And if we just stopped with the reality that we're going to die, it, 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 it might be a hopeless message. The Christian faith not only assures us that there is life after this mortal flesh shall cease, it also reminds us how to live with the reality of our own mortality. And the psalmist continues, and he writes that there is actually good news in the reality that we shall one day die. The psalmist writes, so teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. So teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. Acknowledging our own mortality, our own humanness, is a step, is a step toward spiritual wisdom. And my friends, there is nothing like the reality of death to make us value the life we have right now. I visited with my friend Bill this last week. Bill and his wife, Patty, they, you, you can't tell it from me right now, but they got me running triathlons years ago. For those of you who haven't done triathlons, it, it, it's, a, it's a race in which you swim and then bike and then run. And they started me off with something small. It's just a sprint triathlon, they said, Stephen. You can do it. You can do it with us. Come on. And so I did a sprint triathlon with Bill and Patty. And then they were like crack dealers. <laughs> Took you a while on that one. Here's, here's another one that you can do, Stephen. It's just a little bit farther. You can do this one with us. They always, they always picked ones for me that were on sun Saturdays so that I didn't have the excuse of I can't do that because it's a Sunday as a pastor thing. But they just kept putting things out in front of me. And then, and then um, they, they got me to do an Olympic distance triathlon here in Austin several years ago. And um, it, it, it was a mile open water swim in Lady Bird Lake, followed by a nice little 25 mile bike ride around downtown Austin followed by a 6.2 mile run through downtown Austin. You will notice they put the swimming at the beginning to decrease the likelihood that you would drown at the end. <laughs> and, and, and I will let you know that I finished the race and the reason I kept going in the race was I was 100% determined that I was going to come in ahead of my friend Bill. There is no way I could come in ahead of his wife, Patty, because she finished like in the top five. I talked to Bill this week. I did not have time to talk to Bill this week. I had come back on vacation. I had a busy week. We had a funeral. I did not have time to talk with Bill this week. But Bill said, can you talk? Yeah, Bill, what's up? Patty died. What? Patty died. She didn't wake up Sunday morning. What? She was in her 50s. She was in incredible shape. How, 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 how could she die? She didn't wake up, Stephen. And then he said something that I want you to hear. He told me, I didn't realize how much I loved her until she was gone. And when I hung up with Bill, and I thought about what he said. I went and I found my wife and I gave her a giant hug. Why did I give my wife a giant hug? 
Because, my friends, there is nothing like the, like the reality of death to remind us of what is truly important in this life. If we will let it, if we will let it, these last 15 months of COVID can be a gift to us. They can remind us to treasure the lives that we have. Instead of ignoring the reality of death, instead of pretending that we are immortal, to recognize that one day this mortal flesh shall cease. And so live with that reality each and every day. Let it teach us, let it remind us how to live, how to value what is important in this life. I know, I know as Christians, we live with the assurance that, that though we shall die, God shall one day raise us to a new and eternal life with God in heaven. I get that. But if we will live with the reality of death and let it sink in deep down inside, it has the potential to teach us wisdom, to teach us to be wise and value what is important in our lives each and every day. Now, how do you live with that reality of death every day and don't let it get you down? I don't know, here are two ideas. The first one comes from a young man I heard about. I actually never heard him speak, but a friend of mine quoted him all the time. This young man had a terminal illness that he had lived with for five or eight years. And he said that each and every one of us should wake up every day and assume that we have a 20% chance of dying today. He said, if you, ha if you assume that you have a 100% chance of dying, you're going to get nothing done. If you think you have a 0% chance of dying, you're not going to think about it at all. But if you will think that you just may have a 20% chance of dying today, it will shape how you live. If you lived every day this week with the assumption that you had a 20% chance of dying this week, what would you focus on? What are the things in your own life that truly matter to you that you would focus on? Spending more time with your kids? Reaching out to those who are in need and caring for people? Enjoying the beauty of God's creation? If you lived this week with the reality that you had a 20% chance of dying, what would you focus on that's important in your life? The other, the other idea comes from a country song. You know, got to know, I'm from San Antonio. I lived in Nashville for like 16 years. I love country music, just letting you know. And there's a country song by a couple of guys by the name of Branch and Dean. It's called The Dash. And they sing the story about one of standing at the grave marker of one of their sons. And there is the birth date. And there's the death date. And in between the birth and the death, there's a dash. And the question they ask in that song over and over again is how are you going to live your dash? How are you going to live this one life that you have? How are you going to live your dash? If you live every day this week with the reality that someday after your dash, there is going to be a time when you don't have a dash anymore. If you live with that reality each and every day this week, how would that shape how you live? What would you do this week if you lived with the reality that you only got one dash? What is important in your life? Spending time with family and friends? Expanding your heart and your mind? standing up for what is right in this world. What is important in your life? What truly matters? 
I don't know about you, my friends, I don't know about you, but some days, some days, I can live my life in such a way that when I look back in hindsight, I realize I did not do anything that really mattered that day. I did not focus on the people who were important to me. I did not focus on what really mattered in my life. But if we will let it, if we will let it, this last season of COVID can be a gift to us. It can be the reminder that we have only one life and it is limited. And then we can treasure the life that we have. We can live the one life that God has given us and we can live it to the fullest as God has created it to be. If we will recognize the reality of our own mortality, we can live more and more fully into this one life that God has given us. We can live our dash with love and compassion and justice. We can treasure this one life we have. Amen? Amen. Will you pray with me? O oh, most holy and gracious God, you are a God who's created us. You've created us from a handful of dust. And you create us with the knowledge that one day we shall be uncreated. And we shall return from the dust from which we were formed. And you promise then, O oh Lord, even to raise us to new life. So help us, O oh God, to live this life that we have to its fullest. Help us to focus on what is truly important in our lives. Love and compassion. Standing up for your values of justice and mercy. Help us to live this one life that we have, O oh Lord, to its fullest. That we might be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy in the life to come. We lift our prayers through Christ's most holy name. And all God's people say, Amen. Now whether you're at home or in the sanctuary, I invite us to join in lifting our praises to the God, to the God who holds us in the palm of God's hands each and every day of our lives. Will you stand as you are able and will you join with our musicians in lifting your voice to God?
to go from this place as we prepare to finish worship online, I send you off with an invitation. I send you off to live more fully as the people God has created you to be and to take another step on your own spiritual journey. If you're at a point in your spiritual journey where you are ready to affirm or reaffirm your own relationship with God in Christ and claim God's love for you and accept that in your own life, I invite you to do that. And I also invite you this week to take seriously the reality of our own mortality in a way where we remember what is truly important in life and go into this world to live our lives to the fullest. To help us live our lives to the fullest, I want to let you know about a couple of things going on in the life of the church. As we reopen, we are providing as many opportunities as I know how to do for us to be able to come together as a church and simply be in community with one another because that's one of the things I heard that was missing. And so this afternoon, our teenagers are going to go rock climbing. I think it's the crux. The yeah. The yes, crux. thank you all. Um, and um, Angie Bragg is in the back, and, um, and um, oh, what's her name? Vicki Matustic is going to be at the Connection Station. <laughs> um, and they can help you get connected with that. If there's a financial need, we will help, help everyone to be able to go. So con visit with those two women about that. And then for those of you who don't want to climb rocks this afternoon, we're going to have a picnic. You have to bring your own food. Our worship committee is, is providing the ice cream. And we're going to have music there and just come together and be and visit and play with one another. Anybody want to come be with me this afternoon? All right. Like four of you raised your hands. This is not a good sign. All right. Assuming that it's not pouring down rain, we will meet outside. If it's inclement weather, we're going to go into the fellowship hall and just be. And then next Sunday, we are moving, assuming things continue well, we are moving into our next phase of reopening, and it basically comes down to this word, these two words, mask optional, okay? We still want to make sure that, our, that people who are not vaccinated are protected, particularly our children, and so we are taking every step that we are able to, but health officials tell us that we can move to this next stage and we can do it safely, so we're going to. Can I hear an amen? Amen. All right. And then I highly encourage you to get connected with the ministries of this church by getting part, being signing up for our church newsletter. Um, it is called The Cornerstone, and it comes out every week, and it'll help you know more about things. You can go onto our church website um, if you have not, um, if you don't currently receive that, and just put your email in there, and you will get that newsletter every week and know more about what's going on in the life of this church. Now, my friends, I send you out. We worship a God who brings forth new life, resurrection. We worship the God who holds us in the palm of God's hands all the days of our lives. And even at the point of death, God does not give up on us. So go into this world and live like you believe it. Live like you believe in this God who holds us in the palm of our hands and live a life that truly matters. Go into this world in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.